Hey there, automation builders. By now, hopefully, you've had a chance to take a look at the new Blender startup file and have installed the Automation Tools plugin. If you haven't, you can check out the video linked in the info bar, the video description, or just go straight to the downloads and check them out, also in the video description. Today, I want to just touch on, not in detail, but in general, some of the ways you can expect to improve and speed up your workflow making fixtures. I'll do a full automation tutorial series in the future once the tool is fully fleshed out, but as it's still in beta, now isn't really the time to start talking about all the features when some things may be changing or added. So instead, I'll just talk about something that is here, now, and ready for you to play with. In the new Blender startup file, I've isolated this grill conforming mesh. If you've already looked at it, you may have noticed it's just half a mesh with a bevel modifier. Not really something traditionally thought of as ready for export, but with automation tools, it is. The benefit of using automation tools here is you can model in a more non-destructive way and export models with modifiers with the correct triangulation and the correct UVs without having to do any of that old tedious manual work anymore. Maybe you've heard the term non-destructive modeling, but you don't really know what it means. Well, it basically means making a model as simply as possible, but using modifiers to make changes, so if you need to come back and change something, it's much easier to do. Let's play around with this grill model, and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so I'm gonna add a couple modifiers here, but before I do, I'm going to kind of go through here and simplify this mesh a little bit, since it wasn't built entirely non-destructively. I am going to start by uh, deleting the grill here in the back. All the vertices that have to do with the grill all going away. Okay, now we just have consecutive edge loops everywhere we go. We don't have that triangulated geometry, which was done to uh, simplify the mesh in the past. Um, not really going to matter here going forward. So another thing I want to do is I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier. Okay. Now, what I've done, of course, is I have a pretty complicated mesh now. Like, I've added geometry. It's not a ton of geometry. This isn't bad, but it doesn't need to be this dense right now. Uh, so what I'm going to do is kind of go in here, and I'm going to start deleting geometry. Just previewing every other line. They're about not quite... Let's start getting rid of some of these extra lines. Now the subdivision surface modifier is doing a nice job of smoothing out and evening out what is essentially not really good geometry. Um, this is not well spaced out right here, um, but the subsurf is spacing it out nicely. And I think I may just leave that alone. Now this crease is just too sharp for my tastes, so I'm gonna go into the bevel modifier here change it a bit. That's a little too little here. Do that. And then I'll come up here and actually select these. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the wireframe back on so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to adjust the bevel weight. Uh, it is being not great. Let's try 0.05 here. One. Let's try 0.02 or 0.002. Now, there we go. Now I have a nicer looking bevel range to play with. I can get the bevels just the way I want them. Still think I can get rid of some extra mesh here. Let's get rid of that edge loop. Oh, I'm betting, I bet I can get rid of some of these, huh? Get rid of maybe these three. Now, I'm not sure I want the material Looks okay, I can live with that. If I wanted the material to be more inset, I would need to come in here and add an edge loop. Like so, probably do something like that. And then I would have a little bit more of a wraparound look if that was what I was going for. And this can of course be adjusted by either sliding this edge in or adding yet another edge loop to kind of tighten that in if you wanted it like that or something. All right, now all I want to do is replace the grill that I removed. 
Uh, so I'm going to select the edge loop around here. I'm going to go ahead and crank mean crease all the way up to one and hit F. Go ahead and assign it to grill material. Should do that. And one more modifier to add. I'm going to add the triangulate modifier um, with fixed as its setting. We can see we have triangles kind of going, changing directions here. And if I select this, it's a whole phase, right? Um, but let's see if automation tools can uh, fix this for us. Um, modeling. Triangulation, uh, rotate edges, bam. All right, now the triangles are all meeting up this way. What I should have done, though, is probably change these. Yeah, because now it's going like this. And so I can kind of work my way around that. It's even working through the subsurf modifier, right? And so if I want to watch these triangles coming around, oh, I kind of did that the wrong way again. Maybe I wanted that to be flipped around like that. Nope, I got it right. So we can use uh, that feature right there to kind of fix triangulation. And that works on car bodies. This is particularly designed for car bodies, but it works on fixtures as well. It works through the subsurf modifier um, all very nicely. Okay, so now, now that I have my non-destructive mesh, nice low poly uh, mesh to work with, it's higher poly because of the subsurf modifier that's attached to it. Um, but it's not bad, right? Like we already took a look at it. This is not a super dense mesh. If we wanted to, we could mess around with this and probably get the uh, the the poly count. Yeah, we could get the poly count lower by moving the uh, the subdivision below the bevel and then adding like one loop cut here to tighten that bad boy back up. Yeah, and now we have 4,000 faces instead of what we had before. And this could be more efficient. This doesn't have to be, this is actually still fairly inefficient. We could probably make this even better. But um, remember, it does have to conform. So it has to have a certain amount of density to it so that it'll actually conform around a car body. But at the end of the day, we're ready to export this bad boy now. So what we're going to do is we're going to just select the object. And I have a couple of options here. And if I go to the Automation Tools plugin, Go to export. I've already got a path selected. Um, you just pick your folder here. And I'm going to go to fixtures. I will do selected objects, but I can also do a collection. So if I have like 10 grills maybe in this collection, it'll export all 10 grills as like 10 separate things, you know, or I can export every collection in the file if that was going to be my thing. In this case, I'm just going to do the selected object. And you can see there it is. So now let me just go ahead and re-import that object so we can look at what we got. I'm going to file import uh, FBX, this right here, I think. All right, there we go. So now we can see, oh, the, the mirroring didn't follow through. I may have to look into that. That might be a bug that needs to be fixed. That's why this is a beta test. But as you can see, the whole point of the uh, the video was to show off just how we could take a mesh with a bunch of modifiers. And again, this works with car bodies and we can export it uh, in a non-destructive way. And if we decide, you know what, this area here is just too dense. I don't need this many polys wrapping around the corner. So I can come back to this. Uh, let's make this visible again. Maybe I can just cut the bevel segments down to two. And if I cut the bevel segments down to two, I get a slightly less dense mesh. It's not so bad. And then you could just re-export that. But that's kind of the whole point of non-destructive modeling. It's like you do your export, you look at it, you think, you know what, I want to make a change to it. You come back, the change is as easy as just changing a number in the modifier stack, re-exporting your mesh, and you're good to go. You don't have to sit there and like manually delete loop cuts and all kinds of stuff like that. Now, again, What's really important about this is that it's it works on car bodies with shape keys, whereas before you couldn't export a car body with modifiers and shape keys. You had to do you had to apply all the modifiers and then do the shape keys, and and then you'd be okay. <laughs> you know, you'd have to manually apply triangulation, and it was a very destructive method of modeling. 
Now we can model a car with a mirror modifier, a bevel modifier. Uh, we can do a triangulate modifier. Uh, we can do um, shape keys, bones, all this stuff and keep a, a, a nice non-destructive car. So if we need to fix something, it's easier to come back to and fix it later. One thing I forgot to mention was the UVs are already done for you. You can see I had this, I had previously deleted this uh, UV map. It created a UV map and if I go over there and tab in, you can see that the UVs are all created and scaled accordingly. Don't even have to deal with UVs anymore when you export using automation tools. Okay, so that should just about do it for this one. Again, not a full tutorial, but more of a highlight video showing you how you can proceed with modeling basic fixtures like grills or bumpers and the like in a more efficient method. Just keep these things in mind as you watch my older tutorial videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.